Side projects are a great way to learn new tech stacks, keep your skills up to date, work on something you're passionate about, make your resume stand out, or even possibly earn some side income. Working on side projects also shows initiative and drive for learning and growth. But the problem with most side projects I see on resumes is that they're either the same rinse and repeat projects over and over again, or some implementation of a highly technical white paper. While this is better than not having side projects at all, we can definitely do better. So let's look at what makes a side project good. This video is sponsored by Imbolc. If you want to find out how Imbolc can help you improve your coding while you're working with side projects, then stick around till the end. Hi guys, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. And this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering careers. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. As usual, the reference materials from this video will be in the description below and I have timestamps. So feel free to jump to the sections that interest you more. All right, let's get started. So what makes a side project stand out? My recommendation when choosing a side project would be to try to cross as many as the following boxes as possible. One, something that solves a real problem and doesn't look like you followed a tutorial from somewhere. Second, something that touches the entire stack and ideally something that utilizes the latest cloud offerings. Third, something that has the potential to be used by a lot of people. A useful library or an app is a great example of this. Fourth, something that is for charity or goodwill. Fifth, something that can potentially generate revenue. Sixth, something that is innovative, unique, and appropriate for the time period. Let's look at a few examples to understand what I mean. Libraries make for great side projects. Do you find yourself doing things repeatedly and can't find any existing libraries out there? Or maybe you have found decent libraries, but they lack some features that you'd wish they had. That's a great place to work on creating your own libraries. Libraries are great candidates for side projects because they can be applicable to a wide variety of things like logging, mocking, client server communication, literally name anything you can think of and you can build a library for it. Not only that, libraries check off a lot of points we talked about earlier. They solve some problem, they have the potential to be widely adopted, uh, they can maybe generate revenue in certain scenarios, and if you tie things like ML, cloud compute, and things like that, they can be innovative and unique as well. When Microsoft Teams just launched, there was no logging library to log into a Teams channel. I had some projects where my telemetry was getting logged into Slack channels, and it made it easy for me to monitor some critical events and get alerts on the fly. But since Teams did not have such a library, I wrote one so I could move my telemetry events to Teams. Sure, I could have just written one off code to do that, but it was quite evident that other people would eventually run into the same problem. So I wrote a generic library with that in mind. I also added a pub sub model to give the ability to push the logs over to a queue so that other services could subscribe and consume the same logs. Uh, my library was downloaded by a lot of people and at one point I think it was the most downloaded Teams logging library. Similar to libraries, extensions also make for great side projects. They're very similar to libraries, but instead of packaging common repeated steps together, they can add functionality to existing tools and features. You can work on browser extensions or extensions for specific programs like VS Code. You can also get quite creative with extensions. Uh, when I was preparing for my coding interviews, I wished that LeetCode had a built-in timer, and I also did not want to see the difficulty of a problem I was working on because it can have a negative mental effect on your performance. So I wrote a simple extension that could do that for me. I also wanted to see my performance on a particular problem over time, so I added the ability to record some metadata about the problem in local storage. I'm sure an extension like that already exists, but you could take this further by uh, connecting the extensions back into some form of cloud storage, add user management, and allow users the ability to track their progress over time. That becomes a very good side project and not only solves a common problem, it is also quite useful and also touches the entire stack. Not only that, it has the potential to be picked up by a lot of engineers prepping for their technical interviews. IoT devices are also a lot of fun to work with. I'll share you a funny story. So my wife has a standing desk, but she keeps forgetting to set it to stand mode. I ask her all the time to set reminders and switch to standing position, but I haven't had much success in getting her to do so. So as a prank, I decided to 3D print an actuator and attach it to the button that makes the desk stand, and then connect the actuator to an IoT Wi-Fi module, then over to an IoT hub so that I could set it up with an automatic timer that would raise her desk at random intervals. This may not be the greatest project, but it shows that you can get creative with technology and solve a problem at hand. And the context itself is funny and shows that you have a good sense of humor. 
If I saw this on your resume, I'd definitely have a good laugh and it would definitely stand out. Resumes don't always have to be boring and mundane. So feel free to get creative with your side projects and don't be afraid to include them in your resume. How do you think people like Mark Rober got so famous? Because they solved problems in unique, creative ways using technology while also displaying a great sense of humor, personality and character. Projects that are time and context appropriate are also great to work on. For example, applications to track the spread of COVID or visualizations to show vaccinations were great projects that were contextually appropriate since the COVID outbreak. Uh, they also show your initiative and willingness to step up and help during a global crisis. Uh, if you're into machine learning or data science, you could get creative with your data sets and try to uncover unique correlations between things. Um, and of course, COVID is just one example that is relevant right now, but opportunities like this pop up all the time if you keep an eye out. Well, these are just some examples and I hope you get the basic idea. Don't just work on side projects because that's what is expected of you. Work on them because you found a genuine problem that you'd like to solve. Get creative with your solution and don't be afraid to let some of your personality shine. And while at it, see if you can make something generic that can help others solve similar problems. This always makes up for great side projects. But obviously, a big part of working on side projects is to improve your own learning. And one tool I can recommend that will not only keep your code quality high and consistent, but also help you reduce code duplication and learn the best practices is Embold, who are also kind enough to sponsor this video. Embold is a code analysis tool that helps you learn the best practices and uncover code anti-patterns with detailed issue visualizations. In case of a bug in your code with its component level issue flagging, Embold's static code analysis tool identifies the most problematic components in your code and how how they affect your code base so you know exactly where and how to start your fixes. With their dependency diagram, you can see all outgoing and incoming dependencies of every component and use their partitioning algorithm to split large classes and help you in your refactoring process. You can think of Embold as your personal code reviewer. If your project has continuous integration setup, Embold is also a great tool to plug in as a quality gate within your DevOps pipeline. Using Embold is pretty straightforward. Just push your code over to GitHub or Bitbucket, then connect your repository with Embold. It will then analyze your code and give you all sorts of great tips and pointers to improve your code. And it goes without saying that it also helps you learn the best practices. So if you're interested, please visit embold.io to try it out for free. And that's all for this video. Let me know in the comments below what are some cool side projects that you have worked on. And like always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And for more content like this, consider subscribing. If you want to reach out to me personally, hit me up on Instagram at engineeringwithutsav, where I also do a lot of random tech giveaways. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.